I'm Megan Albers with Lake TV. Welcome to another featured nonprofit. Today, we're gonna to talk to Larry White here at Rock House Church about a brand new nonprofit that maybe you've never heard of called Lake Area Missions Builders. We're inside of Rock House here with uh, Larry White from Lake Area Mission Builders. Now, this is an organization I had never heard anything about until I was told I was doing this. <laughs> so, what exactly is this organization? Lake Area Mission Builders is a 501c3 that we formed in 2013. Um, at the time, we were doing uh, mission trips for a local church and we got caught up in some dynamics within the church that seemed to kind of squelch the drive of the missions. Mm -hmm. So a decision was made by a group of us to form an organization that could be missional focused, but in a non-denominational, non-church way to um, not hinder us when things happen within the confine of those church walls. So that's why the organization was formed. Well, that's great. Um, unfortunately, there's politics with a lot of organizations, and so uh, sometimes you have to do that. And I think it's great that you guys get to, you know, be Jesus to people without dealing with, you know, any of the politics. Exactly. Um, so tell me about the organization. What exactly does it do? The, the name leads you to believe that it's a bunch of builders out doing <laughs> missions, but, it's, yeah. but the focus is about building missional opportunities for people. Um, we started out by doing a lot of things uh, locally to help individuals and as time went along in 2013 as well, a friend of ours actually asked us, uh, Helen Armstrong lives here in Camdenton, asked us to go to Kenya where she was originally from just to see her country and to see if there were things that we could do to help out. So we took a trip with her. Um, one of the things that we did while we were there was we toured the Mathari slums. Okay. And they are in the heart of Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, the Mathari slums are three square miles with a population in excess of 600,000 people. Wow. And it is by far the worst living conditions that I've ever witnessed in my life. And so after seeing that and the impact that it had on us, we came home um, and tried to find a way that we could help out. Mm -hmm. um, during our discussions about what to do, we talked to another missional group who was doing work in Africa, and one of the things that they told us was that when you go to help someone, don't go in with your ideas of what you think the fix is. Mm -hmm. Ask them what they need. Yeah. And so as we talked to the people that we were working with in Mathari, the overwhelming feedback we got was education. And so what we did was we started the Mathari Education Project from that. And what that project does is it takes children from the slums where they do have some volunteers having grade schools. They can get an education up to about the eighth grade in the slums, but after that there's nothing. Yeah. And so what the Mathari Education Project does is we take children, once they graduate the eighth grade, we take them out of the slums, put them in a four-year boarding school, providing them with room, board, and education, and an opportunity at life outside the slums. That's incredible. That's uh, that's amazing. You know, you don't you don't realize that uh, that's a problem. You know, we're we're kind of we're, we're very privileged here in America. So. You know, we yeah. we um, for the most part have access to pretty great education in comparison to that. So um, that's that's incredible. So you mentioned. Um, the education kind of leads to a life outside of the slums. Um, what does that look like for somebody who goes through the education program? To this point, um, we started the uh, education process in 2015. And so far we've taken 140 students from the slums and placed them into the secondary education. Of that 140, we now have 60 who have graduated high school 
And of that group of 60, approximately 60% 60 of them are attending universities and colleges oh, right wow. now. And the remainder are either in trade schools or working outside the slums. That's great. So it's the, the thrust of the project is that in Kenya, that secondary education is not free, mm -hmm. much like it is here in the US, yeah. um, to where it has to be paid for. And when you're a resident of the slums, um, where 95% of them are unemployed, those who are employed are making a dollar a day, mm -hmm. and your slum hut costs you $20 a month to live in, oh, man. there's nothing left to educate a child. Yeah. And so that's where this is so important. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, you guys are a nonprofit. Correct. Um, where is the majority of your funding coming from? The majority of the funding comes from donors. Mm -hmm. um, we basically have people who have fell in love with the project. I always say that, you know, a lot of people look for opportunity where, how do I help a child? Or how do I focus on a mission that has education? Or how do I focus on a mission that has a gospel opportunity? Mm -hmm. This one has all three. Yeah. It fits that bill in three different ways. So it's a little easier for people to get excited about it. Mm -hmm. The other thing that I really try and promote is that 100% of your donation goes to the child. Oh, great. We have no administrative costs that come out of your donation in any way, so that when you write a check, it solely goes to help that child. Mm -hmm. So private donors are the main thrust of our income stream for the children. Yeah. We're limited by income alone. Mm -hmm. We can help more children if we have more income. The other thing that we do is we do um, volunteer activities. For example, we have parked cars at the Shawnee Bluffs Vineyard mm -hmm. um, as a fundraiser. We do raffles, anything that we can come up with to try and generate additional proceeds. That's incredible. Um, so of course, I'd love to hear how people can give, um, but are you also looking for volunteers for this program? We always look for ideas mm -hmm. on how to generate funds and so that's if if someone has an idea on hey this is something that i think we could do as a group locally whether it yeah. be parking cars or you know helping out at benefit dinners anything of that nature or even having a benefit dinner of our own yeah we're always looking for volunteers with those kind of ideas yeah perfect uh okay so now tell me how people can give there's there's somebody watching right now that's ready to just give at all <laughs> When you're, when you're ready to write that check, you can go to lakeareamissionbuilders.org and you can actually go onto our website and there's an opportunity for you to give via debit card or a credit card if you choose to. There's actually on the website would be a mailing address where you can mail a check if you prefer to do that paper copy thing. Um, you can also go onto our Facebook page, which is uh, LAM or Lake Area Mission Builders and check us out there as well. Perfect, well, thank you so much for telling me about this incredible organization. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad I got to sit down and do this interview with you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. It's, it's a need and I'm glad you guys are fulfilling it. Well, thanks. That's great. All right, that does it for another featured nonprofit on Lake TV brought to you by our veterinary.